this is done for a minute. I will continue this, I promise, but you're gonna love this. I need the councilman up here to front row center and I need Okay, here we go. Yeah. 
felicidades a la reina de la calle. Congratulations to the king and queen. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. So don't go too far. Yeah. Okay, and you can look at me the whole time. I'll hold the microphone. You stand and relax. First, can I have you say your first and last name, please? My name is Andre Hoover. Can you spell it for me? Uh, A U D R E Y T S M O R O U D S M David R E A U S. Is this your first time to the seniors prom? Yes, it is. Did you know you were going to be queen? Yeah, I what, what did you think when they pulled you aside and let you know? I said, what I'm doing? What's wrong? And I didn't know. I said, yeah, you, you're the queen. You make, don't tell you you're the queen of the And what does that mean to you? Oh, I'm overwhelmed. I really, I'm surprised. I lost the word. Well, you know? hey, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. So why did you decide to come this year and being your first year? Well, I used to go to everything that we used to have and I never going to uh, a program and I went I didn't have a chance to uh to engrave for some of the uh activities we had. So I was free this year and I decided I'd come. So you'd heard about it the past years and just yeah. couldn't make it yeah, out. Yeah, just couldn't make it out. Do you like dancing? Oh, yeah. I I love going from Zydeco and the Holly Sheffer and, and a little bit of everything. Yeah, I couldn't tell. Uh -huh. <laughs> make sure that we keep your sash up right. There we go. There we go. So what does it mean to you to have the council and throw an event like this just for seniors? Well, I think it's a wonderful thing. I think uh, we should be recognized. It's a, it's a good thing that we do recognize the city of Simpson. And you know, it's, uh, I can say, say it's enough word to thank them for giving our city of Simpson the opportunity to uh, have a program like this. Do you think the seniors of the community are often forgotten in that regard? Well, yes, they have. They, I do think that. Yeah. But then you got this. Yeah. It, it was some, it was a fast one. And now I'm still overwhelmed. I'm not crying, but I'm still overwhelmed. What is it? I, and uh, forgive me if I just ask this question, but what does it mean to you to be able to come out and essentially party with your peers? Whew. As if you were teens once again, actually going to prom. I'm lost for words. I'm overwhelmed by it. I, I'm, I'm really proud and I'm, 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 I'm really, I'm really flabbergasted. Really, I am. And I, I thank the uh, sponsor for having us out. And I thank them for choosing me as a, a representative as queen on the prize. Um, I have to ask, and I'm sorry I do, because I know I'm not supposed to. How old are you? I'm 70 years old. 7070? 70. And I'm very proud of it. I could have sworn you were going to tell me 65. No, thank God I made it over. <laughs> I feel like I'm 65 when I'm on that grass floor. You look like you're 50 when you're on that <laughs> Awesome. Is there anything else that you wanted to say? No, I want to thank Ms. Grandma and my, uh, my kids and Jim and Mike and Jim 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 and without them, I couldn't have made it. Are you going to be here next year? If it's God's will, yes, I will. Perfect. That's all we needed. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Congratulations. Yeah. Cool.
Song, but that's not the song for this this portion.
spell your first and last name? Please? Okay. Troy Ireland. T R O Y I R E L A N D. What was your title or position? Be? Project executive. How does demolition as a demolition as a fundamental concept work? Uh, well, I mean, simply stated, we're we're bringing the building down, so you have to sort of know how a building behaves, and so we are um, taking down the skin to expose the structure, and then working on demoing the structure bay at a time, so that we can do it in a controlled pace. So it's not just attack it and knock it down. No, absolutely. I mean, I suppose you could do it that way. Um, obviously, we've got a, a proximity issue to the building that we just built for you guys next door, so we have to be very careful about. Uh, not interrupting any service, keeping you guys online. Uh, you know, y'all have been doing this for 70 years. You don't want us to uh, bring something down, so we do it at a controlled pace for, for uh, a number of reasons. And then it, it appears that there's sorting happening at the same time. Can you talk through that? Yeah, you bet. So there's there are some raw materials that can be recycled. Uh, you know, they talk about reduce, reuse, recycle. So you can see over here we've got piles of red iron steel and some miscellaneous metal that we're pulling out. Uh, the red iron steel will be recycled. They'll take it and, and they'll uh, reuse it for melt down and reuse it for later. The metals also will be reused. And then the, the concrete itself, this is primarily a concrete structure building with uh, roof trusses that you can see over here. The, the concrete will be recycled and they'll use that for base rock, for roads, and a variety of things like that. We got two different machines out here. Do they have specific jobs or are they doing the same thing? Well, they can do the same thing in this particular case. So we've got a shear on one of them. And the shear is intended to really kind of chew down the panels. And so uh, we're using the bucket to hold up panels at the end while we're tearing down the, the, uh, the precast panels. And then once that's down and the structure is exposed, then we take the structure down a bay at a time. And then the bucket and the shear both are pulling out materials for the recycle process. So they're working together. They can do kind of the same thing, but they also have that, that's, exact, that's exactly right. And so. Um, about an hour ago when we were really doing the demoing of the skin, you really got to see what the shear does in its uh, intended purpose. Right now it's really kind of more of a general demo phase, if you will. Sure. Yeah. This is every little boy's dream, but little boys can't just jump up and do this. It takes some training. Absolutely. So, I mean, the crane op or the, the, the equipment operators here, uh, they've been doing this for several years. Uh, they will tell you, if, if you get on these things, I mean, generally speaking, it's hydraulics that, that move these. and, and they can tell after enough experience when you get in enough resistance what they're up against. Are they pulling on something that's heavy or is it is it lightweight that's going to come down easily? It, it, just like driving a car, you do it enough and you start to get a sense for how the equipment behaves and what it's intended to do. You know what kind of training that comes through just to get behind the control? Well, I mean, th there's general training and then there's uh, specific tra uh, equipment training that they go through and they've gone through all that. So. Yeah, I mean, it's like about hours a week, so that's kind of what I'm doing. Oh, y years. We talked to Britt Bitch earlier about all the work that happened before. Yep. Have you talked to that? Before? Yeah, so uh, obviously when we finished the building next door uh, and, and everyone moved out, once, once the building was completely uh, vacated and everything was made clear for the demo process to begin, then we go through a series of, you get permitting to begin the demo process, you're unhooking all the utilities, whether it be power or water or whatever it is that serves the building, and you get it to where it's independent from everything and, and disconnected, if you will. And once all that's complete, then you go through and you do the abatement of the materials. This building was built uh, back in the 60s, and so there's materials in there that are not safe. And so there's uh, special companies that come in and do that uh, demolition. They do asbestos abatement. And once that's complete, then we get the all clear. Then we can start this process, which is what we started this morning. So this is after not even a full day's work so far. Yeah, we started this about 7 o'clock this morning, round numbers. And uh, I would say that they had the first uh, four bays on the west side done within about 40 minutes, 50 minutes. So it goes fairly quick. You expose it, then you figure out what you want to do. We didn't actually start the structure until about about an hour ago. Okay. Yep. So it's just kind of exposing, looking, and planning that kind of thing. That's right. So it, it's you were talking earlier about the pace of doing things. We have specifically been talking to them, and they have daily huddles. We talk about what we're doing that day, what we want to accomplish, and and they're on radios. They're constantly communicating to each other. The owner of the company and the operators. And, and our supervision are in communication with each other to make sure that everyone is seeing different things and analyzing, making sure that 
we know what we're doing and, and if someone sees something we, we, we tap the brakes so to speak and slow down and sort of rethink what we want to do maybe reposition some equipment or come at it at a different angle. Can you tell me the rough timeline just for clearing the whole building demolished? Yeah, I would say the general structure will be down in about two weeks and then we will do uh, the removal of the debris for the next three weeks. So all told it'll be about five weeks to do this and then the next three months we'll be building the new parking lot out here so that y'all can park next to the building again, which I know everybody's happy with. Personal excitement. Absolutely. Because I started here while that other one was being built. That's I right. I never saw the old parking lot. Yes. Yeah. Well, they used to be able to park in the back. That yeah. was one of the first things we did was tore it down so that we could start the foundation and build the new building. And that took um, the better part of a year. In your opinion, what is it about demolition that gets people just giddy? I think there's a seven-year-old trapped in everybody, and uh, who doesn't like seeing big equipment and, and uh, taking things down? There's, uh, you know, you have, you have to do it sort of intelligently. Obviously, you can't just go and cowboy your way through it, but it's just a fun process. And then I have to ask, it's going to complete 180 on that note. Yep. That this building has been a landmark of sorts since it was constructed. Right. I mean, it was built with a special design. That's right. Everyone kind of knows KPRC. Is there any loss that you would imagine people are feeling because it's a sort of landmark thing right now? Well, I, that's probably a better question for some of y'all's team to answer. I, I mean, I personally grew up in Houston. I've been watching Channel 2 since I was a kid. Um, I, I would say uh, Jerry Martin, I think, had a vision to, to build a new state-of-the-art facility. and. So we've accomplished that, and, and y'all have moved in, and, and so I think technology has changed. Y'all have uh, equipment, just like everybody else. I mean, you're related to a computer. I mean, computers are smaller, and they do more than they did 30 years ago, and same with y'all's equipment. And everything's digital now as opposed to tape, so the equipment supports that. Yes, there's some nostalgia and some history that's gone. I think y'all did a great job with the history wall over there and sort of capturing some of the timeline, and that will be preserved. But, yeah, I mean, it's sad in one way, but I guess it's a sign of progress, and so we're like, moving forward. Like any demolition. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Is there anything else you want to add? No, I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Awesome. So that's right. the interview. Okay. Now we're just going to get the video of some action. I'm going to have to do a long time. I didn't blah, blah, blah too much. Well, I guess I didn't. So, no. I have, I have done half our long interviews where I had to change this.
Good. Three, two, one. Even though this is the first day walls are coming down, demolition actually began four and a half weeks ago.
turn okay here we go so I'm gonna do three two one to count down for my part and then you guys just party with the music all right cool three two one it's prom season across the Houston area which means teenagers all over the place are getting down on the dance floor but they're not the only ones that can throw down or bust a move hey everyone let's show those youngins how it's done Hey man, I'm ready when you are. Ready? Three, two, one. That'll do it from the third annual senior citizen prom, but don't you worry, a fourth is already in the works. In Houston, Chip Brewster, KPRC, Channel 2 News.
R-O-B-E-R-T, G-A-L-L-E-G-O-S. And what's your title or position? Council member, District I. All right, so just rehash that story for me. Where did the idea for the senior prom come up? Well, actually, this is our third annual senior prom, and I, I started this my first year as a city council member. And the reason why is that I used to have an aunt. Uh, she's passed away. She was uh, 80-some years old, and I remember she was very involved with the seniors groups. And uh, during the holidays and whatever, you know, when she was there, she would always tell us the stories of the, the fun that she used to have with the senior group. So. Uh, now that I'm a city council member, it's my opportunity to give back to the seniors of District I, and uh, they're having a great time. Was there anything like this in your district prior to you starting it up? No, no. As far as I know, this is the first time that we've actually had a senior citizens prom. Uh, so again, this is our third annual. Uh, we have a DJ. Uh, we provided breakfast, and uh, they're just having a wonderful time out there on the dance floor. Was it a prom when you thought of it, or was it just simply a dance? No, it was a, it was a prom. Due to the fact that in May. You, you have a lot of high school senior proms, uh, so me and my staff sat down and we were kind of thinking about what can we do for our seniors, and then that's when we uh, basically realized, well, let's have a senior citizens prom uh, in May also. So we usually have it the, mo the Monday after Mother's Day. And what was the reception to it from the seniors community? It was great. The very first one we had three years ago, we were just expecting a little over 200 seniors. We had almost 300 seniors show up. Uh, and same thing today, we have over 300 seniors that are here. Uh, they're all from uh, different senior centers uh, within District I. Uh, so again, we're just having a great time. How does hosting this fit in with any of the community initiatives that you have council? Well, it's just that I personally, I'm in, I've been involved with my community over 30 years before I was a city council member. So I think it's very important that we get the involvement of our residents in our district. Uh, so therefore, now that as a city council member, I want to make sure that I give back to my community, not just as an elected official, but also Regarding the seniors, the youth, uh, also we, 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 we uh, usually go out and have events with the youth as well. Uh, so it's just an opportunity for me to give back. Is there ever any fear of someone throwing out a hip or, you know, taking a little too hard out on the dance floor? Well, ho hopefully that, that hasn't happened, uh, but usually the seniors that go up there, they outdo me on the dance floor, so. <laughs> wow, does that say something though, that it doesn't it matter does. how old they are? That, exactly, exactly. They're full of life. Uh, they enjoy themselves, and they're here to have a good time. And, and it's obvious when you see them dancing on the dance floor, they're just having a great old time. And I'm, and I'm, I'm real glad that me and my staff are have the opportunity to, to do this for them. Do you think that part of the population is often forgotten? 
I would have to say, uh, unfortunately, at times it seems that way. Uh, but I know that I have a senior coordinator. She goes out to our senior centers in District I. When I have the opportunity, I try to accompany her. We take sweet bread or pie or their donuts or something. Uh, and then also, uh, we, you know, just they just like to see their elected officials. Uh, so, it, it, so with the senior prom, that gives me the opportunity uh, for them to see me. I've invited other local elected officials also, so they could attend as well. And then how often are you dancing when you're not at a senior prom? I love to dance, so, as you can tell when I'm on the dance floor. So uh, every opportunity I can get, I, I enjoy dancing. So, so it's a bit of a win-win setting. -win yeah, it is, yeah, it is, it is. <laughs> cool. Anything else you'd like to add? Uh, again, I appreciate uh, all the seniors being here. Again, it's over 300 seniors uh, across from District I. Uh, we're having a great time. It's our third annual, and we're looking for uh, a bigger and better one next year. Perfect. Thank That's you. All we needed. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Give us the The senior prom for 2017. But before we do that, I'd like to acknowledge one more time the 2016 King and Queen, Manuel Sustaita and Sarah Williams. Please stand up. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure and my honor to recognize our 2017 prom king and prom queen. The prom queen will be Miss Brudeau of 6000 Telephone Road. She's been out there on that dance floor and she has been boogieing. Doesn't she look lovely?
Y'all don't know this music.
Manuel, so tight that. Let's give a nice round of applause. All right, at this time I want. To...